All right, guys, for this next video, uh, again, I want to kind of show you the oil pump. But before we get into that, I want to show you as many part numbers as I can. Um, so we talked about in the last video these bare boost performance um, titanium studs and nuts. But we didn't talk about the gaskets, which I just put on there. There's two different gaskets and two different part numbers for those gaskets. So there and there. So there are two different types of gaskets to go on here. Here's the first part number, which is for the back one. So let's get to that again. And then for the front gasket, it is here. Now these are specific to the 2JZ GT engine, okay? So if you have a non, or if you have a 2JZ GE, I should say, these gaskets will not work. This is specific to the GTE. So again, part number there and part number there are what you need for the gaskets. And I'm just putting new ones on this. Uh, I've, I've actually reused gaskets and I still have the other ones just in case, God forbid, something happens. I keep them with me. They are multi-layer steel from the factory, which is nice, kind of like a head gasket. So they don't really go bad. Um, but figured to put new ones on. I'm going all out. Let's put new gaskets on it. Uh, but next thing up we're going to do is the water pump and the oil pump. We might do the water pump first. I'm going to go over the torque specs and all that good stuff too. Um, so yeah, and kind of want to talk about some other things in this video too. So because I can't install the oil pump because I don't have, I'm missing the O-ring that goes here, which is also the O-ring that goes on the bottom side of the block. I'm not sure why it says it should have shipped, so I'm going to dig a little bit more. But for now, what I'm going to do is install, <clears throat> is install the water pump. Um, you can see here I was using some titanium to just pretty some things up, but I'm going to remove most of those. Um, I'm going to explain that here too. So after doing some deliberation and understanding dissimilar metals and then understanding the fact that, you know, that's going to expand differently. It's not that drastic steel versus titanium. It's just the fact of how slick it is and how easy it can back off. Um, there's going to be some stuff I am. So like I'm most likely going to keep some out here. So like here, here, like these three, uh, but the rest are going to be the standard bolts. Now for this, I want to explain to you guys, let's show these here. You're going to have these bolts here, as you can see, they're centering bolts. You're going to install these four first. These are your A bolts. These are your B bolts. So you're installing these two first, and then you're going to install these after the fact. So I'll show you exactly what needs to be installed. I'm going to set up the camera and uh, show you guys how to install this. Before we even begin here, guys, you're going to need this O-ring. So see if we can get it to focus here. This 96761-24040. You're going to install this right here on the block. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up here. So you're going to install this in the block here and run like so, there we go. So you want to make sure you put that on first. Then after you do that guys, we're going to go ahead and put these two bolts in. So see if you can see here, this bolt down here and this bolt here, these are your A bolts. So these are the bolts that you need to put in first. They are your centering bolts. So we'll do this here, just get this one started first and foremost because I want to make sure that O-ring sits on there nice. And then this one over here. So your other one's down here. So where my finger is right here is your other A bolt. A bolt. Again, we want to make sure that O-ring's on there and I'm going to press up against this. Let's probably lock this wheel. I'm just gonna spin these on by hand real quick just so it centers it up and holds it on there. We're not gonna to torque these down yet, just wanna use this. It tells you in the book to do this also. Uh, again, just help center everything up, make sure you don't have any leaks. Now, once you put those two in, you can put your other four bolts in here. So you got here, 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 and here. Now again, these titanium bolts, uh, I'm gonna take out this one too uh, and put a factory bolt back in it. But I'm gonna use stock bolts here and these bolts then need torque down to 15 foot pounds. So let's put these back in it here. Got one here, here, here. Come on, Jimmy. Hope everyone's having a good day because I'm really, again, I love doing this. This is the fun part. Everyone loves assembling the engines, at least I do. Just putting this stuff back on them. This is always the fun part to me. There we go, and then one more here. Boom. Now I need to torque these down to 15 foot-pounds or 21 newton meters. So I borrowed my buddy's little torque wrench here. These are all 12 millimeters, so they should torque down nicely. Let's see if that hits. Hopefully it doesn't. Click. 
And let's do the other A bolt down here. All right, that one's good. And let's do the rest. That one's good. That one's good. Good. And good. So those are all torqued down to the OEM specs. So 15 foot pounds is what they need to be torqued to. Now again, like I said, I gotta put these other ones in, but that's your water pump. Next up, we'll be putting on the oil pump. I hate that I don't have it on there yet, but uh, let's go ahead and do that next. All right, guys, I found the other O-rings. So we've got two O-rings here um, for the oil pump. So we are working on this next. That's what we're doing. Um, here's the part number for the oil pump. If you guys want it, see if I can get it up here, right there. That's the part number for the oil pump if you need it. Now, the O-rings, you'll need those part numbers too. The top one, little guy, right there. And then the one below it um, is this one here. There you go. The Y says truck, but it does. That's the exact O-ring you need there and there. Um, once you've got those in, you need to also do the FIPG part of putting on the oil pump. So before you do this, you need to put FIPG. You need to make sure you clean off this mating surface too, because if it's got oil grease on it, you want to clean all that off so it actually adheres to it as best as possible. Um, same thing with the oil pump. So let's go ahead and show you that. So first thing we're going to do here, guys, is I'm going to old brake cleaner back surface here. So just clean every bit off. Uh, it was already pretty dry to begin with, but just to be safe, again, you want that surface to be as clean and dry as possible. And then after doing this, give it five minutes. That might be overkill, but give it five minutes to fully dry because you don't want to put this on with brake cleaner because that'll break it down too. I just want to make sure that the surface is 100% good to go before I do anything. Okay, get down on that groove too. I think I'm going to leave it more because of this engine. I just want to make sure it doesn't come out anytime soon. So clean that off. Once you do, like I said, give it five minutes or so. Um, and then we're going to put on this Toyota FIPG, the seal pack. Here it is. So this is what you're going to be using here. Um, this is what you use after the fact. factory is like a gray color. This will be a black color. Um, but this is what you use to reseal everything. You could use any, there's other sealant out there. I just prefer using what Toyota uses just because with something like this, I don't want to take it back apart. Plain and simple. Comes with a little nozzle. Went ahead and cut it here too. Again, I'm going to let that dry for a minute here, and then we'll start sealing this up. All right, guys. Next up, what we're going to do here is take the cap off. And you can see when you flip it over, it's got a little point on it. You press that down in, and that gives you your opening. Most people forget about that for some reason. And I do like the fact that Toyota actually gives you this to help press it out. Now, you don't want to go too crazy. I believe, let me go over to the book real quick. It says two to three millimeters the whole way around, which is always easier said than done. Um, so we'll see how this goes here. There we go. And this is probably way too much, but I just don't want to take any chances either. You don't want to overdo it though either too, because then that could cause some other clogging issues. go and then finish around that's the only spot you need to double up on and I'm going to come back around and run it around those circles too so go around there there I should have just done it the first time but I didn't and you want to make sure you run on the inside And again on the inside and there. Now my dummy, I'm a dummy and forgot to do it here and then here too. Okay, now once you do this, they say you got about 15 minutes to install it. So I'm gonna take it from here. I'm gonna hurry up, set up the camera guys to take it from this and take it over to the engine itself. Another thing I went ahead and did guys ahead of time here is around the crankshaft here, put a little bit of oil to help lube it up. Um, Again, nothing too crazy, but now what I'm gonna do is take this and slowly, oops, there we go. Try and line it up best as I can. There we go. 
Oh, that's perfect first time. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and do the bolt. So there's gonna be two long bolts and then two short bolts. Your two long bolts go over here. So two long bolts go here. You'll start that there and there. Okay, the rest will be your short bolts, which go the whole way around too. And again, nothing crazy here. Uh, got one there. It's easier with the water pump off, but I couldn't help myself but start installing that. So again, another one here. Sorry if this video is boring, but I wanna make sure you guys see all this stuff. There's that one there. You can probably hear my kids inside. They're just not happy campers today at all. Uh, one down here. I think I'm missing one. So there we go. Come on. Why can't I get this one to thread? Let's go. Um, where am I missing? Ah, right here. I have to get mine. There we go. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw these in. Now, when I'm done here, guys, this is going to go to 15 foot-pounds again. So, get these drawn in. Make sure they're all drawn in. So my torque wrench works easily. All right, 15 foot-pounds, so we're gonna start down here. Fifteen. 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 Make sure that was. I know I got that one under here. Right. Yep. All right. Should be everything. I think they get this one. So let's double check them all. So 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. And last one. Perfect. So there you go, guys. That's all bolted up, ready to go. We got the water pump, oil pump. Um, you can see, again, two long bolts, and the rest of the other bolts here are the shorter ones. And yeah, again, don't forget the O-rings for both the water pump and the oil pump. Uh, and, and again, Toyota FIPG is what I recommend for this, just because it's simple, cheap. Um, you can buy it from any of your Toyota local auto parts dealers. So easy to get a hold of too. Now that we've got the oil pump on, right? We did the oil, water pump, oil pump. Um, next up, what we're gonna do is the bling bling. This is a 36 and two crank gear. Um, this is from Powerhouse Racing. There is the part number. So Powerhouse Racing makes this. You can still buy this brand new from Toyota, but the reason I did this, I've heard these little teeth break off and I didn't want to take that chance. This is what gives you an accurate reading. So the factory non VVTi crank gear is 12 teeth. This is 36 and two, or is it 32 and two? I can't remember off the top of my head because uh, I'm having a brain fart. It's 36 and two. I'm like 99% sure. If I count it, it's 36 and two. Um, this gives you better timing, more accurate. Just It's better all around. Uh, and this is a billet piece, so these teeth are just stronger. And it, this is barely any more than what a factory one is that's cast, so I'm like, why not? It just looks cool. You'll never see it again, but why not? So all you gotta do is slide it on. Uh, I'm gonna oil this up just a little bit, so put a little bit of oil here so it slides on nicely. Um, it actually says to do that in the book too, so it just doesn't you know, kind of corrode or anneal itself to the crank itself. Um, and then we'll slide this on. All right, I don't know how well this is gonna slide on. It should be somewhat tight. The first little bit is like, whatever, but, Oh wow, there we go. Went on first try, look at that. Sweet, that's on and we're good. Now there's another plate you put in front of this for the timing belt, uh, but you have to put the timing belt on first. But there's a plate you put in front of this and it bevels kind of like up into out, keeps the belt on and keeps it from chewing up the plastic cover. But we're not gonna be chew using, no, 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 chewing. We're not gonna be using a plastic cover. I've got a set of, just wait. I'll show you guys that in another video. I don't even want to talk about it until they show up because they're going to be really, really cool. But that is on now and uh, we're done.